William Wessoge, a lead AP, has over 30 published articles as a contributing writer for the magazines Earth Odyssey and The Noise. He has worked as the educational coordinator for the Arcosanti Project, the Acosa Institute, and the Lost Valley Educational Center. Having taught over 200 students in his career, he's now compiled his lessons on permaculture design into one text, William's PDC. Permaculture is a combination of the words permanent plus agriculture. The permaculture design discipline was first established by the work of Bill Mollison and David Holmgren. The goal of their curriculum was to teach people how to design in accordance with the logic and power of nature. William's PDC is a full permaculture design textbook that combines the standard permaculture design curriculum combined with the lessons William Wes Auger has acquired over his career. Wes has learned not only from a variety of experienced permaculture designers and teachers, in addition, in his career, he has learned directly from the likes of Edward Masria, author of the Passive Solar Design Handbook, Pritzker Prize winner Glenn Murcutt, Brad Lancaster, author of the Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, and Dr. Paulo Soleri, creator of the Arcosanti Project. Having taught over 200 students, Wes has streamlined his lessons into this one text. It will teach the permaculture design principles, various techniques in ecological analysis, information on animals and plants, a step-by-step -step design process to follow, and illustrations of actual permaculture projects he has worked on. Whether you are a teacher looking for a textbook to use for a class or a motivated individual who yearns to learn on their own, this book is perfect for you. Williams PDC Permaculture Design Course by William W. R. Auger. All original text and illustrations in this book are the intellectual property of William W. R. Auger. Copyright August 2011. Williams PDC <coughs> Permaculture Design Course Table of Contents. Food Systems, page 61. Food Systems. A garden should feel like a walk in the woods. Dan Kiley, American landscape designer. Fellow permaculture teacher Andrew Millison and former agricultural manager for the Arcosani Project once simultaneously scared and excited me by pointing something out. Look around your city, he said. You'll see ornamental landscaping and trees for miles around, all consuming water, fertilizer, and labor. And among all of that, not a speck of food in sight. Imagine the food abundance in your city, town, or neighborhood if all of the trees and shrubs were food producers of some sort and of all the lawn space was used for gardens. Theoretically, this could be accomplished since we already are devoting the resources to keep those plants alive. As you can see, there is more than abundant space for food security within every city, town, and neighborhood. In this section, we will talk about the role of food systems in permaculture design. Gardens, that is putting crops in the ground, is one strategy for food systems. However, food systems can include so much more. Food systems include gardens, food forests, orchards, and a host of other strategies. There are many other ways to incorporate food production into any permaculture design. Gardens and orchards can be grown in swales on contour to help reduce erosion. They can be implanted in rain gardens to help retain water on your site. Food systems should intertwine throughout any permaculture system, from the furthest edges of your site, right up to on and inside of any buildings. Of course, the ultimate goal of any food system is to provide multiple sources of balanced nutrients, including vitamins, minerals, and don't forget proteins. Food systems can include medicinals. So before you design any food system, you will need to do some research on the needs of human nutrition. When most people think of food systems, the first thing they think of is gardens. Here in America, we have massive space for untapped gardening potential. In America, we use about 10,000 square miles of land for agricultural production, and we use about 40,000 square miles of land for lawns and ornamental landscaping. As a culture, we are nowhere near using our maximum capacity for food production. In most urban landscape, we use just as many resources to grow ornamental plants as it would take to grow edible plants. Next time you go for a walk, imagine if all the lawns you pass were replaced with gardens producing food. Imagine if your city municipal landscaping was filled with fruit trees, berry bushes, and edible ground crops. My point here is that ornamental landscaping and edible food production can and should be one in the same. Gardening is a very deep science and it takes years to become a good gardener. There are many great books on organic gardening that one can find to help you begin to learn the basics of creating your own gardens. When it comes to choosing edible plants for a permaculture design, most people instinctively jump to what I call the salad plants. Lettuce, tomatoes, carrots, 
Uh, they also usually, usually jump to beans, potatoes, then peppers and spices. I would just like to point out that the typical salad plants make up about 1% of the total palette of edible plants. For example, most everyone knows what a dandelion is. Very few people know that they are edible and a good source of vitamin C. Very few people realize that they're in fact edible flowers, and not just a rare few, there are a multitude. When most people think of greens, only a few varieties come to mind, but there are dozens upon dozens of types of edible greens often thought of only as weeds. You could never use a salad plant in your life and still fill a, a design with dozens upon dozens of edible plants. So when looking for edible plants for a design, remember to open your mind to what edible really means. When thinking of edible plants, remember to integrate rather than segregate, and remember to use and value diversity. I think that gardens in the dirt should only be made with local edible plants, be they salad plants or not. Plants not native to your local area should be grown in container gardens, architectural food systems such as greenhouses, or appropriate food technology such as hydroponic systems. A good permaculture food system designer will take advantage of every available opportunity to produce food. In this, the vertical dimension is often ignored and marginalized in most designers' mind. I learned this lesson well from studying under Dr. Paolo Soleri at the Arcosani Project. While he talked about the vertical dimension mainly in terms of building space, his thoughts on the subject also readily translate to permaculture food systems design. Trellises allow food vines to be grown on the sides of structures, even your standard chain link fence can be used as a trellis system for vertical gardening. When you integrate the vertical dimension, even a small backyard can produce a high yield of food. Food can also be grown in container gardens, which are simply any kind of container with food growing in it. Containers can be anything from buckets to barrels. I've seen old computer housings, housings used as container gardens. Perhaps my favorite container gardening system I've ever seen is the kiddie pool garden. Uh, where cheap plastic wading pools were converted into container gardens. Some advanced techniques in container gardening use barrels where holes are poked in the side of the barrel and things are planted there. This enables you to grow food out the top of the barrel and along the side of the barrel. Appropriate technology can be used to create mechanical food systems. These systems can have many advantages over gardens as they allow for crops to be better protected against critters, diseases, and you can control the environment of them better. Plus, it's easier to add amendments from compost. In fact, some mechanical food systems can themselves be composting systems. It can also be easier to capture runoff water and reuse it. Some examples of these types of systems include hydroponic systems, aeroponics, and gaining in, in popularity are aquaponics. Hydroponics suspend the roots of the plants and waters and do not use soil. Airponics systems use misters to spray atomized, nutrient-rich water directly on root systems dangling in midair. While hydroponic systems do save on water compared to conventional gardening, airponics provides an even much greater reduction in water usage. The trade-off is airponics are harder to maintain, as the spray misters can often get clogged. Aquaponics systems combines growing fish with a hydroponic system, where the fish water is siphoned off and used as the nutrient-rich water for the hydroponic system. Of course, do not forget the role of animal systems can play in food systems, and I'm not talking about growing animals to be slaughtered. Chickens can provide eggs and occasionally meat when a rooster gets out of control. Ponds can be used to grow fish. Beehives can provide honey, and goats can provide milk. Architecture can also be used to provide growing space for food systems, the most common, of course, being the greenhouse. Designing greenhouses, well, that's a whole book in and of itself. One of my most favorite simple architectural food systems is the hoop house. A hoop house is simply made from something like rebar or PVC pipe made into arches about eight feet tall with plastic stretched over it. A hoop house is basically a greenhouse, but much easier and cheaper to design and build. Hoop houses help to greatly extend the growing season inside of them and help to protect your crops. Cold frames are another small scale architectural system that can increase food produ productivity. Cold frames are essentially really small greenhouses that just go over like individual plants and they help protect the plants from freezing. Of course, you can also make full bio shelters and solar greenhouses. We need to mention that food systems extends even beyond what you grow in your home. It, is also, it also includes where you purchase your food. This includes shopping at CSAs, community sort of supported agriculture, and other local sources of food. Food preservation can be an important part of your food system strategy as well. These food systems will require skill and some infrastructure, 
So if the permaculture designer has a client with these skills, they should know how to design the appropriate infrastructure systems that will be needed. Learning exercise. Find a book or other resource on native edibles in your area, go on a hike, and pick a bunch of food and come back and have a meal, or at least a salad from the food you've harvested. Thank you.